everyone, welcome back to the Nintendo Prime Podcast. It's been two weeks, and somehow in those two weeks we broke a microphone. <laughs> Without even touching it. <laughs> Without even touching it's it. It's impressive. I don't know how that happens. But you know, that's what happens when, I guess, I mean, uh, I've told people in the past, we're using some pretty cheap microphones, and uh, yeah, it, it just happens. I, I don't really have any explanation for it, also the fact that I guess I just need to upgrade the quality of our microphones. Which, by the way, that's a good time to bring up that if you would like us to get brand, better equipment, a better camera, better microphones, <laughs> patreon.com nice. slash Nintendo Prime. Go support us. We actually have a funding goal there that will allow us to get better microphones. Now that we're down to one, and if this one breaks, we're screwed. So um, so I apologize if there's some inconsistent audio between me and Eric, but well, we're, we're doing our best over here. Uh, but I should also mention that besides yours truly, Nathaniel Ruffle Jansen, Eric Moore, we have a couple, uh, I guess they're guests, but I they, they kind of sort of work at the site. So um, you, you, some of you guys might have seen them. We've had him on before, Mr. 5J Gaming. Hey, guys. I do he streaming. Does, yep, he does streaming stuff. He's got his own streaming channel on Twitch, and he does streaming for Zelda Informer, or Zelda Informer, Nintendo Prime on weekends. <laughs> Whoops. Yep. Man, I haven't been at Zelda Informer for like two months. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. it's been, oh, man. You were there for a while. It sticks with you. Yeah, right. It's hard, it's hard to forget. Uh, and then, obviously, we have Mr. Daniel, if you just heard Hello. him in the background. Yeah, that's right. He is a video creator for our YouTube channel. Hasn't created a video in a while, but I just told him that <laughs> I just told him that I miss him and he needs to come back. Nice. He needs to come back. I miss his variety in the content that we make. Uh, so we have some a, a lot of stuff because since we haven't had a podcast in two weeks, E three happened. It did. It that was it a thing. Yeah, it sure yeah, happens. It, 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 yeah, it, it sure happened. So the week of E3, we obviously didn't have a podcast go out, and because of E3, I was too tired to record a podcast to have come out la- uh, yeah, last week, even though we're recording this the week of that it should have came out. Oh, that's what happens. For those who don't know, again, we record on the Thursdays, the week before the podcast comes out. Uh, we're just going to hop right into it, because we have five topics. Um, at least I tried to condense it down to five, because there's a lot we could talk about. Uh, the first topic is actually going to be some E3 rewards. Mm. So these are obviously just Nintendo related. We're not talking about the whole of E3. Uh, besides, I don't really believe in like winning E3. That it's just yeah, that's a fan console yeah. war thing. Yeah. Who cares? Right. <laughs> um, mm. but we're gonna go over three three categories, and we're gonna give uh the game we think deserves it and why. Uh, and the categories are our most surprising announcement, the best game, and the worst game. Now remember, just because even if it's a worse game doesn't mean it's a bad game. Just out of all the all the announcements, mm. so I I don't want to be the cop out person. So I'm gonna let Five J Gaming go first on the first topic because <laughs> okay. I know if I go if I go first, I'm gonna like take everyone's game. Um, so Five J, what was your most surprising announcement? Most surprising. Uh, I mean, there were a couple of big surprises out there, and I, I don't know if I want to throw them all out there right now and take everyone's well, answers. Just, just your most surprising. Just one game. Uh, I'd say uh, probably Anthem. Um, not not because uh, of any reason of, oh, that's a, an existing IP, and I didn't expect it to come back, obviously. It's a new thing. I didn't expect to see something so awesome. There were so there were so little things I was excited about in the Microsoft conference that when they dropped that little trailer at the end, for me, I was dying. Uh, and the Nintendo side of thing, things, obviously, everyone's kind of freaking out about Metroid. I'd say that um, what surprised me even more than Metroid Prime was that they were remaking Metroid 2, the Game Boy game. Which maybe puts into con- uh, context a little bit why they were so you know adamant about people not remaking the, the the second game in the Game Boy Advance style AM two R. Now we kind of understand you know why they didn't want that out there. They they had their own plan and boy it looks great. They even call it Samus Returns to let you know hey Blast Ball that was a thing and uh, we know that you didn't <laughs> like that. So Samus is actually going to come back and and uh, save Aww. the series for you. So, Blast Ball was so much fun. Um, I actually haven't tried it, but I know that people were just upset simply because well, it was out there and, well, and there wasn't the, Samus out there. Yeah, Federation Force in general was actually pretty good. It, it just, it was, if they announced it now, it would be better right. received. Exactly. Yeah, it wouldn't be a problem. Then. So, yeah. Um, anyways, I'd Daniel, say, 
Yep, go ahead. Your turn, uh, buddy. Yeah, well, again, from like kind of a similar answer, for me, the most surprising announcement was just the fact that there was any Metroid coming out, let mm-hmm. alone two Metroid games coming out, because yeah. I was pretty sure that Nintendo forgot that they had this great <laughs> franchise just hanging around doing nothing. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's like the GameCube era fair, again. There, what people the can same actually quote me. People can quote me before E3. I said there's no way Metroid's going to be at E3. Oh, man. And then two <laughs> games, right? There is the right. same amount That's of great. time between Super Metroid and Metroid Prime as between Prime 3 and Prime 4 being announced. Oh, wow. I'm just putting that out there. And everyone's always like, oh, Metroid was dead for so long. And then Prime came out and it was great. We just had that same gap if we ignore Mother M. Or Other M, sorry. (laughs) Mother M. 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 Mother M. Mother (laughs) It was not... So if we ignore that game, then then we basically have the same same thing just happen again. Where the series just, like, died. Okay. Mm -hmm. I I, I, I gotta say... I feel like those were the expected answers. Yeah, right. The right. Games, Absolutely. Because those, those are the biggest um, biggest reactions, I think, yeah. mm-hmm. out of everyone. Oh, well, I know. Both uh, of us, both of us, even beforehand, were just like, there's no way. Oh, I was no like, way. no way. There's no what way. does happen? I'm like, yeah. no way. No, that, that's the Metro music. No way. No way. Right. <laughs> it's one of those moments that I wish we were live streaming so yeah. people could have saw the reaction. Because, you know, well, I mean, again, just go nuts. Yeah, not even, not but, even one game, but two. I, yeah. Well, now that I'm building a new staff, I might be able people can cover the event so I can live yeah, there stream. there you go. There you go. Mm-hmm. That's the idea. We'll see if that yeah. works. Um, Eric. Hmm. What was your most surprising announcement? I, obviously, it's going to be Metroid, but I'm also kind of surprised that they're 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 making a, another Kirby game and a Yoshi game. Really? They, That's a surprise. They, you know, I don't know. <laughs> well, you got to remember, Eric, Eric comes from a, a place where he hasn't really gamed on a Nintendo you? system in a while. Okay. I don't know. If you lost us, that's your problem. No, no, no. I think the audio, <laughs> the audio just drops every once in a while. It's fine. Keep going. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah just yeah, fine. Yeah. Just fine. Um, so, well, it, it's not that I'm surprised that they're making Kirby games because, obviously, Kirby's a big thing. But, yeah. you know, it's... it's This early, maybe? Yeah. It, it yeah, does seem rather of. soon. I will say that, yeah. Right. Because so, we just got, what, Woolly World... The yeah, the 3DS, yeah. Woolly, Pucci and Yoshi's Woolly World. Oh, yeah. Yep, they just ported that over to 3DS, and it was just released on Wii U like two years ago, so it wasn't that long. Yeah, and they and had what was the last, what was Kirby, the last Kirby Planet Robobot well, on 3DS Robobot as well. Yes. There, yeah. yeah, Robobot, yeah. Yep. So it, it feels strange to have those games like so soon. Like mm-hmm. it's, They definitively said it's like 2018, it's coming. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm not complaining, uh, though. I really liked Yoshi's Woolly World, like a lot. A lot of people yeah. looked at it and thought, oh, well, this game's silly, but the level design is incredible in that game. Um, and it's people say that Tropical Freeze was the best 2D platformer of that era, but Yoshi's Woolly World is actually the best 2D platformer of I that I think it's era. better as a multiplayer <laughs> game, Tropical for Freeze sure. is a close second, but I like Yoshi's Woolly World better. It's probably a lot Woolly easier World to play with, with younger folks. And, or I played with my wife because they had like a... Uh, a mode where Yoshi basically uh, hovers endlessly. Oh, yeah. So that was really oh, great God. that she could play through the game with me, you know, and not feel like it was getting too tough for her because she could just yeah. rely on Absolutely that. Absolutely same with, I played the entirety of that game through with my son and that mm. he couldn't get through Tropical Freeze, but he could get no. through Yoshi's Bully World as well. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah. The, the Donkey Kong Country games are notoriously difficult. Oh, but yeah, definitely. Yeah, but that's, I like that. I, I wanted to throw out that <laughs> nobody <laughs> brought up the surprise of the remake of Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. I mean, where did that come from? That was crazy. Well, I, I mean, I haven't gone yet. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Nate. Oh, crap. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Let's just for, for, forget about me. It's okay. <laughs> the, the biggest complaint on this podcast, this the biggest complaint on this podcast is I talk too much, so oh, okay. it's okay. All right, That's well, I'll just last. steal your thunder the whole night then. Oh, my God. Right. Yeah, I do that. <laughs> Everyone's um, going to talk over you. <laughs> yep. That's okay. It's payback. Um, <laughs> so my most surprising announcement is none of the games you guys talked about. Uh, and it, it might not be surprising to some due to rumors, but it's surprising to me because it's never happened, ever. Pokemon game on a home mm. console. Mm. Yes. Yep. It didn't have the flair. It didn't have the dramatic, you know, little 10-second trailer showing off, you know, the title or anything. But 
that I think that's what dampered it a little bit is how it was announced. Mm-hmm. Right. But the fact that they said we are making a core RPG Pokemon game for Nintendo Switch, that's Pokemon in HD. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I been dying to get back into the Pokemon series. Everyone tells me go do Sun and Moon, go do Sun and Moon. I'm sorry, I can't bring myself to do it. I will do it for the Nintendo Switch. Yeah. Right. I, since I was a child, I wanted to play it on my big screen. And yes, I know about all the hookups Super you can do to play your Game Boy games. Yeah. yeah. Those, that's not the same thing. I wanted a console version of Pokemon. Yes. I'm getting it. It, it took a hybrid system for me to get it. <laughs> yeah. but I'm getting it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. So I am pumped. Like, beyond belief. As everyone's, like, freaking out over Metroid, I'm like, dude, Pokemon. Yeah. yeah. Pokemon. Mm-hmm, yeah. Like, like, oh, it's Metroid. Oh, it's Metroid Prime 4. I mean, big announcements, but, like, dude, we've been getting Metroid games for 30 years. <laughs> You've never gotten Pokemon on a home console. Well, wow. 30 yeah. years with these huge-ass gaps, <laughs> like, between them. <laughs> yes, yeah, true. I'm telling you, man. Well, if you want to talk about just home consoles, I mean, what was it, a six-year gap for Breath of the Wild? Oh, my God, yeah, but <laughs> was it, it was worth the wait. Right, well, but Zelda games come out all the time. The, the, whether it's a remake or a new game on 3DS. Yeah, it's something. basically yearly. You don't think about it, but mm-hmm. when you... Not really, yearly. It's pretty well, close, it's though. You know what not, I mean? Like, there's sometimes a two-year gap, but they, it's really not as far between the games as you think with well, all the Well, that's because spin-offs. they expanded the franchise a lot. Yeah, we exactly. Have, they have the spinoffs with Tingle, Hyrule Warriors. Um, but, uh, you know, it's just like Mario. It's a, one of Nintendo's best-selling franchises. Of course, mm-hmm. it's going to have spinoffs galore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Metroid... The surprising thing with that with the two games is just that I've said it all along, and this is why I didn't think they were bringing Metroid back so soon, uh, at least not in Metroid Prime 4 especially. I thought, you know, maybe Metroid 2 Remake, right. that, that is something I could foresee, but I'm like, Metroid doesn't sell a lot of copies. No. Um, I, 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 but I do feel like, in hindsight, the Metroid Prime 4 announcement came at the right time. Just because it, uh, it came at a time when the Switch already has all the momentum, so it's it doesn't right. have to be the game that sells the system. It's just a momentum carrier. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, you know, unlike like when other M was announced, it was supposed to be like this big, like oh, it's going to carry the system for the year, and it's like it, it didn't. Even if it would have been great, Metroid just doesn't sell that well. I feel I like that. that's kind of been how the Switch has been going the entire time. You know, the hardware they got out there as soon as possible, and the software was a little light on the UI side, you know. Sure. It felt like it was a little incomplete, but they're like, hey, let's get it out there. People are going to get it in their hands. They're going to like it. We're going to tell them about all these games that are coming up as soon as we know about them, and they're going to be excited. You know, they're they're not playing it to the point where they're, you know, oh, we're putting out a new Metroid game, you know, in six months. It's, sure. hey, we're putting out a new Metroid game, and we just started working on it. So maybe in three years you'll see it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. And Pokemon so, too, same thing. Oh yeah, Pokemon's huge. Pokemon's huge. Uh, let's. I'm gonna move on to the next part of this topic. Uh, that is now to put this in perspective for our fans. None of us were at E3 playing the games, right? No. This no, is true. Sadly. No. No. Eric, Although, Eric and I went last year. I, no, I just wanted to frame it for the conversation for the folks knowing that right. these next two mm-hmm. awards we hand out are just our onlooker awards. The, mm-hmm. the like. The next, the next category is the best game, and this is just based on looking, not hands-on experience. So this is we have the same experience as probably ninety-nine percent of you viewers. Um, just wanted, just wanted to frame that. That I do have someone, uh, Zion, you know, from last oh, yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. went and he was actually going to have some footage for us that we're going to be using on our channel. Nice, stuff like that. But mm. um, again, he told me it might be a couple weeks before he gets that out to us. So, so we might have some Nintendo Prime videos, but it's nothing to do with me. Sure. Uh, we're going to go best game. We're going to go in reverse order, except for me. I'm always going to go last to make sure I don't <laughs> have like All right. minutes. Eric Moore, what was your best game oh, at E3 as an onlooker? God dang. It, it's so hard be, to pick between the, the two Mario games for me. And because specify there. Which two are you talking about? That would be Odyssey and uh, Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Oh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Because, I, as I've stated before, I absolutely love the rabbits and it oh. looks like and, and it seems like it's going to play exactly like XCOM. so and that's another game that i absolutely love so the combination of those two right there is just amazing in my mind and imagine then, if they combine that with the gameplay of majesty oh <laughs> yes but that'd be a little oh, harder yeah it's right, not turn-based right. i know i know yeah, but they'll the make it work somehow yeah yeah right <laughs> but uh and then Odyssey just again reaffirmed that it, it feels like there's so many different like games morphed into one that mm-hmm. it looks and feels awesome. 
And, and the fact that you can take over a T Rex is just that just puts it over <laughs> the top. Okay, oh, that so, so I put that it, so was I guess, I guess an amazing top, reveal. So. <laughs> you, you, so you're gonna go the T Rex. Just to clarify, yep. Put it over the top. That is his best game. Yep. For me three. All right. Uh, let me see. It should be Mr. Daniels. Well, before, I just wanted to mention that if we had uh, biggest surprise, uh, le- least surprising of all the announcements for everyone, of course, was that Raving Rabbids battle, Kingdom battle, since oh, it was spoiled, yeah, like but, months but ahead of te- time. Technically, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, but I almost don't even consider that an E3 announcement anymore because right. we literally knew it before E3. Exactly, yeah. like everything. Mm-hmm. The, the surprise of that was just, it doesn't suck. Right, yeah, you actually <laughs> saw <laughs> gameplay and it actually looked cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, Daniel. What was your best game? Um, well, I'm gonna say actually, I have played Super Mario Odyssey a little bit. Um, just oh. you were saying, none of us were at E3, and I wasn't. But uh, at some uh, certain locations there were these early access events, so I actually yeah. managed to get to oh. one of them, and I played about I know, ten minutes nice. of Mario Odyssey, and it was really good. It handles really well, which is not not a surprise. I guess Mario, so it, it's got to handle well. Um, I live in Wisconsin. We don't have early access events here. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Shut down. I got the Mall uh, of America, so I do have that. I just haven't gone yet. But, yeah, that's true. We don't yeah. live. We only live like an hour away hour from hour and a half. So. Hour, hour and a half. Hey, Ooh, there you go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I thought my commute was bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's your commute? Oh, well, it's like 40 minutes to get to work, but <laughs> that's, that's nothing. I drive yeah. that like every day. Here, yeah, right? yeah. No, I just well, his commute to Mall of America <laughs> might be a lot longer than that, but. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know? <laughs> all right, all right. Anyways, uh, yeah, I, th- I think, you know, I I don't think it counts as an announcement, but I was all over the Breath of the Wild DLC the whole time oh, that that nice. they were showcasing it. Like that was like the biggest thing for me, and I've I've been, it's been probably no surprise that I've been really into Breath of the Wild. I put I was telling Chris earlier, but I put two hundred fifty hours into it already. <laughs> like just wow have played basically uh, just that until i got arms but like since it released that's all i played uh, until arms came out which this is, is like the uh, other day i uh, this is where I, I do have to give a shout out i haven't posted it yet um on zelda informer i saw it on their facebook page i put up this screenshot someone put on deviantart how they played like 700 hours of breath of the wild and i was like hey can oh. anybody beat this there was somebody i haven't posted it on zelda Informer yet but somebody submitted to zelda informer 780 hours played wow okay wow which is oh, like man. eight hours a day or something every day yeah. since it released like, yeah i, I haven't it's... gone that far i guess <laughs> <laughs> full disclaimer i have 45 hours yeah i don't even know a proud 45 hours oh, i don't wow. even know so how many shrines have you found nathan <laughs> how many shrines have you found Nathan? uh only, only like 36 wow. Wow. really oh, okay. all the divine beasts down only half the memories done i know Oh. I, I'm bad, especially for all the years I'm in Zelda Informer. But like, I have What's three fine? kids. I can't write walkthroughs yeah, anymore. I already reviewed the game, so it's kind of like I don't have the excuse to be like, oh, I need to do a big marathon session of Breath of the Wild. Yeah. And now we have hard mode coming out, so I already know I'm going to restart the game all over again, anyways. Oh, I think Fair that enough. they said you can have a separate file for that. It, it's a separate save file, but it starts all over again at the beginning. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So 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 now that I know that's coming, it's like, why would I play now when I know I'm gonna restart all over again? Yeah. Mm. Why experience everything now when I can experience everything <laughs> in master mode as I'm getting my ass kicked? Oh yeah. <laughs> right. But that's the best way to do it. If I can 100 percent the game in master mode, that'll be awesome. That's my goal this year before Mario Odyssey comes out. We'll see. That's that's gonna be. Well, I'm gonna be live streaming the entire playthrough. So. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> nice. But you yeah, guys can look forward to that on our YouTube channel here and on Twitch. It's gonna be. Um, I'm almost scared. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You especially now be. like they added the, because because they <laughs> made hundred percent and even harder because now like you have the extra chests that are in all the floating mm-hmm. floating yep. things out there and That's then scary. plus you also have trial of the sword. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And I think the, I have uh, to somehow complete this before. The too. Oh, the regen. <laughs> So it means I can't use my bomb and run trick anymore. Yeah, right. Oh, no right. more of that. Yeah. But, you know, I never. It's did. not even a trick. Everybody does that. Oh yeah, I used to, but I I, I outgrew it. Now I'm just throwing you. You won't outgrew it in master mode. I been. I don't know how I'm gonna handle the great places. plateau. If I can't bomb and run on the great plateau, I don't know how I'm taking out those pur- purple vocal lens <laughs> that are gonna. Oh. Like the items are not strong enough, so yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. 
I'm gonna have to drown him. Trick him into the water. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. You have that to works. knock him off the cliff sides. All right, so yeah. we got we got a vote over here. We got uh, Eric with uh, Super Mario Odyssey, but by a hair, by a T Rex, yep. by a T Rex. <laughs> uh, we got Daniel over there sticking to his guns with the Zelda, going with the DLC. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was one thing we didn't mention about the DLC is the Champions Ballad. Yeah. They they kind of um, glossed over it's it. A lot of it's a lot of questions, but they didn't say any details about it. So, right. except that it's about the champions. Except that mm-hmm. that right with four with four new amiibo, which yes. that part is awesome. I'm all I about that. All. <laughs> I have a pretty great amiibo collection. I have about forty amiibo. Nice. Um, I and I want every time they announce all these new amiibo, I'm like, I want I want the Metroid ones. I want all the new Breath of the Wild ones. All I could say for people for that the only thing that I, I'm gonna get the amiibo. I know Zelda mm-hmm. amiibo are the only ones I make sure I always get. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I say that I'm missing all the 30th anniversary ones because I Oof. did pre-order and they're still not in stock. Um, and that's what I was gonna bring up for like people who don't even have the current Breath of the Wild amiibo. How can they feel right now? Oh like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, we don't even have the current ones, and you're releasing four more. That's that's great. Yeah. I never found We're a guardian from Amazon to get one restock. <laughs> yeah, thanks, guys. <laughs> Yeah, the Ocarina oh, of Time man. one. I'm so sad I didn't jump on that amiibo right away, and it's. I don't think it's mm-hmm. ever going to come back. I'm just out of luck. Yeah, I have that oh, one. Well, you can pay fifty one bucks on, on eBay. Uh, it, it is. It's a me. really nicely detailed, really nice one. It's. <laughs> I'm sure it's amazing. I'm sure I'm it really is. It's great. Out. <laughs> it's still in the box. <laughs> can I just custom order one. Oh god. Uh, All right, five J. So so we got Zelda DLC. We got. Mario Odyssey, which way are you looking at right now for your best game of E3? Side note, I probably have more than 70 Amiibo. Oops. Oh, dude. <laughs> I'm going to send you my mail Side note, you, you want to you wanna, you wanna send them to me? I will gladly replace my green screen background with all of your Amiibos. Every video, right? Right? Yeah, I need to figure out a shelving unit to display it all behind me. Um, oh, I'll build one for me if you say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll trade you for that that special 3ds with a capture card. I, hey, we might have a deal. I, I, I'm not. I'm not, I will not get rid of these. I love them. Dang They're it! Great. I was gonna be like, <laughs> I don't even. I don't really even use it. <laughs> right. And I'll be able to be like, Oh, you have that? You should be live streaming 3ds games. Yeah. Like, besides the value on you that, you want to buy me some 3ds games? Yeah, right. I don't have. I don't own a single 3ds you game right now. Own That's any? right. I wrote. I run a Nintendo channel, and I own zero 3DS Dude. games. The only game I can play in it right now is Spirit Tracks from the DS. Okay. No, oh, but that's a great game. That's <laughs> it a good is a great one. Game. I love Box it. Boy. The only reason I still have that play the is Box Boy series. GameStop They're cheap. They're great games. <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, no, GameStop wouldn't buy it. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, a fun story. I don't own a lot of games right now. Um... I at one point owned a ton of games, even a ton of Switch games. I had like six or seven mm-hmm. physical games. That you did. But I have kids, and this is my only job, and I don't make any money. Mm. <laughs> so um, the first things to go are the things that are more expendable, and my video game collection is expendable. It sucks. Mine's you not. Your broken TV out in the- <laughs> Mine's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, it, it's like the only other things I have to sell, like I'm not going to sell my TV. No. You, you don't get anything for a TV. No. Anyways, so like, I'm not selling my computer. I literally need that for work. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, so it's like, oh, the only thing I haven't sold is my capture card 3DS because I just don't want to go through the hassle of selling it on eBay. Sure. Um, because I'm not selling that to GameStop. I'm not taking like 20 bucks for a $500 <laughs> thing. Like, no. They might give you it's 50 though. I mean, whoa. Ooh. <laughs> no, they, with, with a trade in promotion, you could probably get up to 70, but it's like, but it's a capture card. Exactly. And they, they don't add extra value for the capture right. card. In fact, they might not even take it because then they'll say it's modified. It, exactly, yeah. <laughs> oh. And I still have my Switch only because my girlfriend was like, no. I literally had it in my car to sell and she just slapped me. So put that fucking thing back in your office. Wow. Smart. Like, okay. She's very smart. <laughs> wow. Yes. Because she, she, well, she, she knows. she cares. Right there. Well, she does. Mm-hmm. She knows I use it for work. So, like, she knows that if I get rid of it, one, I'm probably not going to be able to find another one the rest of the year. Best Buy had, like, four. And they're probably all gone. <laughs> probably not, <all>, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, I'm probably not going to be able to find one. I'm probably not going to have the money to buy one anytime yep. soon. And, uh, yeah, I have games I need to play because I, I run a Nintendo channel, so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's the one to hold on to, obviously. Hey, I own That's a 3DS feature. and I own a Switch. I don't own any games. I own Breath of the Wild, still. <laughs> I almost sold that. Then I'm like, oh, DLC's landing end of the month? 
What? What was that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm Never not mind. selling it right now. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. I'll keep that. Yeah. Um. So, anyways, getting back into it. Five J best game E three. Go. Okay. So. I mean, I, I, I'm going to say something different just because uh, I think an easy choice is uh, Mario Odyssey. It does look awesome. Absolutely, I'm excited to take the place of a frog and whatnot. Uh, but I'm going to go back again with um, the Metroid remake, or Metroid 2 remake, Samus Returns. Uh, wow. That, oh my goodness, what a remake that is. I mean, they're going with the 2.5D thing where it's all 3D graphics on a 2D plane. Uh, they're adding in um, all sorts of uh, Samus over the games keeps getting more and more acrobatic and having more moves and more abilities. And uh, similar to if you were to play Zero Mission and you were to play the original Metroid, you'd probably think they weren't the same game. And they're basically not. That's exactly what's happening here. It is so far removed from the source material. It's basically a brand new game in every single way. And it looks great. I only wish it was on the Switch. That is the only thing that I would change about it. Otherwise, it looks really awesome. Uh, all those battles looked really cool. The graphics looked great. Samus looks awesome. Yeah, Let's I'm do it. Really I'm ready. I'm glad they changed Samus's look back to sort of more yeah. of her original art design, like very yeah. similar to the um, Metroid 2 design yep. for Samus. Because in Mother M, I don't know, they changed her shoulders were too small, her arm cannon was too small, and it just it looked really off to me. And then they carried that design into Smash, and I just it, it doesn't do it for me. Mm. I really need those big shoulders, you know. Where was other M in the uh, in the line again in the chronology? Uh, after Super Metroid, but before Fusion. Okay, so sort of three and a half. Yeah, okay. if Fusion is four, then it would be three point five. But but the yeah. plot's the same as Fusion, so we can just ignore it. And move on to Fusion <laughs> instead. <laughs> so it's now, now that there's a 4, is that 3.33? <laughs> what? Oh my god. Now that there's an actual 4? No, oh, that's, that's Prime. Prime 4. That's, oh, a, that's a different that's a series. Different, like, oh, yeah, those lineage are... of, got of, of it. Metroid. Got it. Okay, we're good. Yeah, there's no point. The Prime comes after 3, but it has nothing to do with Super Metroid. Oh, but Prime, the Prime yeah, series it. comes after 1 and before 2. So you've got 1, Prime yeah. 1, 2, 3, and then I guess 4. Ooh. And then Met and then Metroid <laughs> Samus returns. Wow. Or Return of Samus. Until, until four pulls a breath of the wild. Ten thousand years. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then this is getting to be Samus, like the Zelda timeline. Oof. Oh yeah. So then after Prime ends and uh, the timeline splits. <laughs> what about Metroid <laughs> Prime Hunters? We're so in one timeline there's oh, yeah, Metroid Hunters. two, and then the other timeline is Samus Returns, right? Yeah. Oh, sure. What, what about Federation Force? Where does that go? That's in the prime time. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, the unified prime timeline. Well, I was asking about Federation Force oh. and Metroid Prime Hunters, and don't forget Pinball. Oh, no, man. it's canon. That's canon. <laughs> it is very canon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wow. Anyways. All right. So, yeah, that's my pick. Good choice. Good choice. Uh, I don't want to cop out, but I'm going to. It's Mario Odyssey by a landslide. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, so cool. I, I really wanted to go with the Rabbids game just because I feel like I really want to talk about talk about it. Well, maybe we'll get to it in a, in a future conversation. But Odyssey just feels like I've been having this conversation, I guess, lately, especially on, on YouTube with, with a lot of different uh, of our viewers about like you know, is Mario hardcore or is it like a casual experience that brings in everyone? And I and I just say, why can't it be both? Mm -hmm. And Mario Odyssey, if anything, is a callback to Super Mario 64 mm -hmm. and Sunshine. Like, Bill Trendon himself said that, like, that's what it calls back to. Yep. And those games were very much not really considered casual experiences. In fact, those mm -hmm. games sell significantly less than a side-scrolling Mario game does. That has a broader appeal. So... In a sense, I would argue that Mario Odyssey, as fantastic as it looks, as much as it's going to appeal to everyone, because it's E for everyone, Mario's for everyone, there's not an age group that Mario doesn't fit in. Mm -hmm. My daughter's not playing this game. She's six. She she wants to play Mario, but she wants to play side-scrolling, easy, hit, hit one button to jump Mario. Right. She doesn't want to play complex moves, don't understand anything. I mean, she thinks it's cool yeah, you can yeah. transform into stuff, but she's never going to figure out how to do it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or jump on the hat as it, um, as it hovers well, in air. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I, so, I was there at that early access event with my son, and he got to try the game out, and he was able to pick up the 
capture mechanic of throwing your hat onto nice. things pretty easily. And he's four, so... Oh, um, nice. How nice. like, going and finding go. objectives... So maybe my daughter's just an idiot. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> he, although, again, like, he... Thanks for insulting uh, my daughter. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, boy. <laughs> but, I'm sure but, that I was mean, the intention. He also couldn't really, like, get to any objectives or anything. He was just kind of playing around oh, I can't in, call like, her the idiot. plaza, she, she's basically. Special. So. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> Anyways, no... <laughs> No, the thing is, like, like, no, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I'm insulting. I'm, ins- I'm the one insulting my family. Yeah. Um, no, it's, it, it's just a game that uh, it appeals to everyone. But the, I think the people it appeals the most to are the people who really, really like 3D platformers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, 3D platformers have kind of fallen by the wayside over the years. Mm-hmm. For really. Even Nintendo doesn't understand why. When they were asked, you know, do you think it's hard to make 3D platformers? They're like, no. We actually don't know why people don't make them. Like, we're the only ones. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> and they're not. I mean, you know, Ukulele just ca- just came out and, and like, to some people reviews. love it, some people hate it. Yeah, it's a love-hate game, apparently. That's fine. Yeah. But it, it it's like, where has the genre gone? Yeah. I don't know. But Mario Odyssey reminds us that the genre has plenty of... of gas left in it mm-hmm. um, it feels you just have to have it feels like the world war ii no, shooter well, you know where they were everywhere every single year and then they were just gone and then eventually somebody has to bring it back so maybe nintendo bringing it back will bring back all the other imitators <laughs> doing the same resurgence. thing yeah <laughs> maybe i mean maybe i don't know all i know is that it looks fantastic yeah. there isn't any part of this game right now that i look at it and be like this looks terrible yep no, even the weird wonky in a city where Mario's is supposed to be a human, but here's a real looking human. Yeah, I, yeah. I, it's Mario. For right. some reason, it, it all, this would only work in Mario. Yeah. They tried it with Sonic. It didn't work. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. But it works with Mario. I, I, why? I, I don't know. Things just work better when you throw Mario in. I, I don't know why. Maybe because he's a person, not a hedgehog? Well, mm. and I think I, Nintendo I, I, takes I guess, a lot more care pitch? than Sega does, right? Yeah, yeah quality control yeah, too, too. Like if it was an actual good game with a bad setting, it probably would would have been right. a lot better received. Right. But no, well that's the thing I, with like the Sonic Adventure games is they were good games, and even though the setting there was like the whole real people thing, people don't complain about it as yeah. much as like the later like Sonic 06 and things like that. Yeah. Because the game was good enough that oh, no one cared oh, that all these real people were wandering around with Sonic, right? Right. Um, I, I do want to give a special mention. Uh, it's a game that I've been watching a lot of footage of lately. And I was, it was a very close, like, like it's kind of tied with me with Mario and Rabbids for my second favorite from E3. And that is Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Oh, yes. Just need to give a shout out to that Absolutely. game. Absolutely. Because, no, I, it's getting overshadowed by everything, which it should. Because that's just Mario Odyssey's a big deal. But... That game looks fantastic. Yeah. Just, mm, it's everything that, like, a true Xenoblade Chronicles, like, sequel should be. So far from what we've seen. Yeah. Um, and that's not to say, like, I love X. But, like, obviously, with this one having a 2 in the title, that's not, like, the exactly. literal sequel. That's just, like, yeah. a side dish. Um, so, and we're going to move on. Did they, did they to... say that they, ha- that they guaranteed that it was coming in 2017? Or was yes in in yes. America. I thought they they specifically said in America. It's officially holiday 2017 in, in America. Amazing. Wow. Well, you got to figure. You got to figure. Mario's coming in October, so that's not a holiday. Yep. Yeah. So now Xenoblade Chronicles Two is technically their holiday game, unless they have something um, else to announce later in the year. What else? Random the direct. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the only, I almost think I almost think they're intentionally making Xenoblade Chronicles through their holiday game to push on Black Friday because Mario's going to sell no matter when you release exactly. it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. So if you get it out of the way soon enough, that's still going to sell like hotcakes. But hey, what's the hot new release at the time? Technically, right. not mm-hmm. Mario. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So maybe it's their attempt to try to make Xenoblade more popular because uh, they they have a team of like a hundred people that make that. That's really big for Nintendo. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, and if it, for so, Nintendo to make RPGs at all, I mean. They're, we're used to yeah. them doing the wacky, here's Nintendo's take on an RPG, and it's not particularly traditional in, in in many senses. But Xenoblade has been an amazing series for Nintendo. It feels like what Final Fantasy should have become, but didn't. You know, I just, I really love Xenoblade, and I, and I love that it's a Nintendo I'm exclusive. I'm still waiting. 
I, I love Xenoblade, but I'm still waiting for Pandora's Tower 2. <laughs> Wait, no, didn't that, that I like, did come I out? I like that more than Xenoblade. Yeah, it, Pandora's Tower 2 did? Oh, 2. I, I missed the 2 part. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no. I liked Pandora's Tower more than Xenoblade. Uh, really? So, Why? It kind of saddens me that Xenoblade's the series that continued and not Pandora's Tower. I think they both should continue, but it was very obvious that there's no way. Like, they released, what was it, two or three different JRPGs? Three. And, like, there, yeah, there was only one that was going to survive. There's no way in heck Nintendo was going to keep all three going. Right, um, and I don't think they were all necessarily Nintendo properties. One of them was the no, last no, story, it and it was, like, some of the creators of yeah. the original Final Fantasy games. Um, yeah. That one didn't do so good, though. No. All right, let's, we're going to move on to the last part of this first topic, and that is the worst game. Um, again, for those listening, it doesn't mean this is the game that we... Uh, hate it's just a game that well maybe we do or <laughs> it could, it, our least liked i guess is the best way to look at it unless yeah. we say otherwise mm-hmm. um and again we'll go back in reverse order so that means mr 5j hey what is your what's your least liked or worst game for me three uh i'd say the the phrasing i i would change it a little bit for me to say that i was least interested in it uh the new yoshi game to me looks exactly like woolly world but with a like a diorama perspective and in in higher quality graphics and i think that's you know that's going to be fine but it seems so hot on the heels cuz they had the 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 3DS remake and it it just i don't know it, it doesn't it, they didn't show enough of why it was a a new game that justified a very similar look uh i didn't see a whole lot of new features you know there wasn't a lot to get me excited about it, it I was surprisingly bland, but I'm normally very excited about Yoshi games because I, I really like that different style of platforming. Yoshi is very different from uh, the many platforming games that Nintendo makes. Um, so uh, I was surprisingly lukewarm on that one, and I'd say that was probably my biggest, I'd call it maybe a disappointment. I maybe expected a little too much out of it, but yeah. Now, excuse me, sir. <laughs> Was the change from yarn to cardboard not good enough? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and it looks nice. It looks nice, but I mean, the, they're sticking with the whole, like, uh, a kid's crafts theme, and that's cool. And it's really cool because people don't do that in any other... Um, systems, you know, you don't see Xbox mm-hmm. really doing that kind of thing. Yarny was was close, but that wasn't an exclusive. Um, but they're they're doing a lot of that now. I mean, all the way back in the Wii era, they were doing that with Kirby's Epic Yarn. Um, you know, so I, I mean, it's it's cool. It looks well, great. Name one other Switch game that does it. But I, I was I just wasn't thrilled by it. You know. Mm-hmm. Well, name one other Switch game that does it. Well, not a Switch game yet. You're right. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. How can it be tired on a platform that doesn't but it's have like, a game like that? Uh, when they put out uh, Mario Kart 8 <laughs> Deluxe, I was really excited because they put in a, a brand new battle mode, even though 90% of the game is exactly the same as it has always been. Uh, I was more excited for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe than I was for, for Yoshi because what I Ouch. saw from what they, what they showed me from the battle mode was something that I wanted so much, and I'm, I'm not seeing anything in there yet, yet, that I'm wanting so much <laughs> that I'm excited for Yoshi. So It's okay. I'm, I'm just yanking No, I'm, ne- I'm explaining exactly how to, I love Yoshi. <laughs> we'll see if they give us some more to like, but right now it's just, okay, it's a Yoshi game, and that's, that's all we have. Okay. How about uh, you, Mr. Daniel? What is your least liked or worst game for me 3 You know, I, I don't know if... Like, there wasn't a game I saw and I was like, oh, this is going to suck. Right. <laughs> um, I guess <laughs> if, I, <laughs> if I had to pick yeah. one that I was least excited for, it would probably be, um, like, the Mario Luigi Superstar Saga. Because I, I guess I never played the originals or anything like that, so... Plus Bowser's Minions. Um, oh, sorry. Plus my mis- <laughs> yeah. So I, I never played really long title. <laughs> I never played the originals or anything like that. So I I just was like, okay, that's coming out, great. Kind of moved sure. on. Yeah, that's should, that, that's interesting. I mean, should the fact you've never played it make you more excited because it'll be like a I, brand I, new I game? Guess, but I was just I don't know. It just didn't. I was too busy didn't getting fancy. all excited about the. Like, there's a reason you didn't play it the first time around, and that reason hasn't changed. Right. I guess. Yeah. It just doesn't. It doesn't tickle my fancy. Just. A, doesn't appeal. Doesn't appeal. Yeah. Uh, Eric Moore, yeah, my gosh. good old buddy or pal. Least uh, like game. Worst game. God. I'm probably I'm gonna have to agree with Daniel on the one that I'm probably least likely to play is the the Mario and Luigi. <laughs> but 
I mean, the game is it, so good. <laughs> it does look good, but it, it's probably like, a game that I'm going to probably It is probably one play. of the most publicly underrated games out there. Not critically, it's critically rated amazing. Right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is so good. Oh, um, my God. But to you saying that to me, what? Like just knowing you, <laughs> it's just like someone saying that Super Mario RPG is bad. Ooh, oh, yeah, that's no, no. what that's like Ooh, to me. Okay. That's how good that game oh, is. Wow. Okay, words, wow. man. Wow, that that is that is just throwing it on the gauntlet because I know yeah, what yeah, you're like. Oh, I, I do. That wasn't, I do. That wasn't a nice thing to say. <laughs> I know that, that hurts. I thought we were best friends, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Different opinions, but no, no, definitely. Um, but I think. It, the game that I'm least likely to play is that, but I think that, God, the the Kirby and Yoshi ones, is, even though they look nice, they I just don't, again, they just didn't get me all, I gotta go, oh, I, I gotta go, this is great, this is fantastic. So what is it? I disagree about Kirby. Answer. We can, now that I compared it to Super Mario RPG, no. you, okay. No, so I'm your not. answer is still yes. Mario and Luigi's? Yes. Okay. Those right. three are probably the ones that I'm least likely to play. But probably. which one of the three? Right. The, the bottom one, no, of the barrel. One game. The, the bottom, bottom of the barrel. barrel. Oh, God. <laughs> you just pick Mario and Luigi because yes. you're not going to play yes, 3DS games true. anyways. That is very, very true. You're done with 3DS. Yes. I know. We've yes, had this I conversation. Am. So. That is very, very true. You, you like actually might play Yoshi or Kirby, especially if I get like new copies of it. Right, because it's, it's on the Switch. Yes, yeah. you're very, very right on that one. Just throwing that out. I shouldn't yes. be swaying your opinion, but no, I know, no, no, no. Like, I yeah. know you are not. I, I you're never it's his even channel. He gets to yeah, tell I you what you forgot think. about the <laughs> yeah. 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 thing. You're going to play it. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Why did you pick <laughs> my game? <laughs> oh, Tori does it every week. <laughs> <laughs> See, I okay. Um, I'm gonna get crucified right now. Uh oh. After what you said. <laughs> um. <laughs> what Breath of the Wild DLC? Oh no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Is it? Is I was it? I was disappointed in what they showed of the DLC. Um, oh, no! But I understand. I no, the, it's actually not my least, but but just a word on that. I am a little disappointed in what they showed of the DLC because the most interesting parts of what that trial of the sword could be were never shown. Um, sure, we just saw stuff that they already showed in preview screenshots and in the announcement trailer. Like I, it was nothing new. I already saw all those areas. Sure. Although I do have to say they did give you one of the most epic screenshots ever yeah with that with that ending yeah. thing of the first first uh demo yeah, yeah. well I, I i still like the screenshot of uh he's and miyoto back back to back holding the yeah, yeah. the guns from yeah. Modern rabbits <laughs> yeah I love that. <laughs> I, it's so corny everyone like there's maymays of it everyone yeah. i don't care that thing <laughs> it was awesome just just one of those moments you only get at e3 it only ever happens at e3 um so did you but, call it a maymay Yes, meme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meme. What the deal? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> those, those, it was those maymays. You know those are the little, like, the like, little like, like, crab guys in the like, like thirty thirty one years ago. Thirty one years ago, it wasn't even a word. No, so. you're right. It wasn't. <laughs> it's, it's probably not even still a word. It's out of the dictionary. No, it's, 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 it's in the, it's the Frindle situation. It the they made it up, and now it's in there. See, to me, this is like this is like the debate over GIF versus GIF because they're. It's just spelt incorrectly the way they it's, want you to pronounce it. Right. It's more like Ugh. potato tomato. Anyways, but <laughs> tomato tomato. No potato tomato. No. <laughs> I just punched him. All right. Um, so worst game. Uh, this is where I'm going to get a lot of flack. It's Metroid Two. Sam. Really? Oh. Oh, you have some explaining um, to do. I'm I'm letting him explain. Go ahead. I, I, Yes, I do. Now, I'm excited the game exists. Yep. Uh, it was a definitely a surprise announcement. Uh, obviously, I didn't think there was going to be any Metroid. Mm-hmm. I, I wasn't a huge fan of the original Metroid 2. Yep. So, when I looked at this, I was hoping for it to make me want to play it. Because I'm, I'm almost in the same boat as Eric, where I'm pretty much done with 3DS. Yes. Um, as I said, I don't own any 3DS games. Part of that's because I had to sell it. Part of it's because I'm not buying any new 3DS games. Mm-hmm. There, there isn't any any ones that make me want to say, well, I should put down my Switch and pick up my 3DS. Um, and Metroid, obviously, good. Like, if it was a new, brand new side-scrolling Metroid, that, that probably would have made me say, all right, I got to go get that mm-hmm. game, um, at least to try it. So, one, I already know everything that's happening in the game. Uh, there doesn't appear to be any new content. That you know of. Be beyond, beyond gameplay elements. Like, they added new gameplay elements, and to me, all the new gameplay elements they added made the game easier. 
Well, and if you take a game that the only part of it I liked was that it was difficult, and you take away the one part of it that I like, and all you do is give me a pretty facade with zero announcements on new content on a game that's supposedly coming out soon. September. That, that's pretty soon. It's still a little ways out, though. We're almost, we're almost, to, we're almost to July. Yeah. It's two months. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to announce a remake of something and it's going to have new content, that would be a pretty big announcement. I feel like there's going to be more did. info. Cause I I don't think there's going to be anything. I think it's a straight up, it's Ocarina of Time. Yeah, but I think it's it might it's be more a, Zero Mission though, remake. where Zero Mission was almost completely the same game, but they had all sorts of new mini bosses and new abilities that were not in there. And uh, you were exploring the yeah, same I mean, areas, but they were almost entirely different. And then there was true. a mission at the end of that, the that, game that was enough. not there at all. That's not a new content. There was a whole new mission as Zero Suit Samus that was completely new. new It wasn't much, but it was something new. It wasn't enough. I I have to interject that the Zero Mission treatment that it would be getting is enough, I think. If if you have a game that is getting a remake, even if you don't add new, like, uh, the new area or something, which Zero Mission actually did, but Mm -hmm. even if you didn't, just changing the way that Samus (laughs) handles to be more playable... Is, is is should be enough because like and the environment less the confusing first... so it doesn't look yes. exactly the same in every room yeah so like <laughs> playing through the same areas between metroid one and zero mission the two are the same areas and you're playing mm-hmm. the same character and fighting the same enemies but because you can actually navigate it uh without a map or a walkthrough and you can control samus in a way that is is much not just easier to control but like is more fun to control. Yeah, exactly. That, that would more be enough fun. for me to uh, yeah. to want to look at this this remake the same way. I'm definitely gonna go pick it up. I think. I, I'll, I'll say thank you. You guys are the only thing preventing people from unsubscribing. <laughs> 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 Literally, I say like three words, and it's just no. You're wrong. Right. Look at this and that. Oh my God. Now, I, I would say this, about that's Metro exactly two, what the comment section, If the only thing you liked about it was that it was difficult, maybe it's because that was the only reason they gave you to like it. Maybe there was nothing else redeemable about it. Now, if they're going to remake it and give you other reasons to like the game, you don't have to worry so I much. I watched yeah. all difficult. the gameplay segments. I watched all the gameplay segments. Nothing in it looked good to wow. me. Wow. It looked like the same game with new mechanics coming in from other M that made it even easier. Yeah, but if you can like, see I'm where like, you're going, I've done this. I've done that. I've done this. I find Metroid Two though is not difficult because it's like, oh, this fight, boss fight is so hard. It's because it's so frustrating, well, confusing, like to try and yeah. navigate the world and to yeah. go for, like Black to know where that's, you're going. That's and what part. You're that's to part do. of what made it. That's part of what made it good to me. Yeah, but that's that's. I remember that's, my my favorite Zelda game before Breath of the Wild was Zelda Two. I like Zelda Two. I well. love Zelda but Two. Yes, Zelda Two. You know what you're supposed to do. You're able to go from point A, and you're like, okay, well, this is my objective right now, and hey, okay, here's the dungeon, and there's the dungeon boss. That's my objective, and you're able to navigate the dungeons well enough because they're well designed, and mm-hmm. there's enough diversity, um, and it's challenging yeah. because it's genuinely challenging skill based it's skill based not yeah. just confusing and, exactly. and frustrating yeah, yeah it's it's but but that's what metroid 2 was for me so not a question for, for you though nate <laughs> in general how do you feel about remade games do you normally not get excited about remakes that's a very good question because that could have a lot to do with it well one which we should probably have in another podcast <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Okay, then. that's a good topic for another time we're grilling you now so, um <laughs> That that actually is a it actually is a topic I did want to have on a podcast, and I was just talking about the value of remakes. But uh, well, we can almost probably bump this one because we just, talked about just how to much. get. Don't worry about it. Just to get it out there, um, I don't know how to feel about remakes because, like, on one hand, obviously I've covered Zelda all these years. I got excited for Twilight Princess HD and. You know, whatever. I'll be excited when Skyward Sword eventually HD eventually gets announced. That's obviously going to happen at some point. Uh, and like, I got excited about these other remakes that are basically the exact same right. game. No new HD content, upscale. upgraded visuals. Um, and I, you know, part of me always said it's not worth sixty bucks for Twilight Princess HD. It's the same game. It's not worth, you know. 40 bucks mm-hmm. for Ocarina of Time 3D because it's the same game. It should be like half off of what a full game costs on the platform because they didn't do anything new with it. Uh, and two, I mean, 
when I say anything, there's always little tweaks on right. gameplay things. And that's kind of the way I'm viewing uh, Samus Returns right now, because that's all they showed us, was they made little gameplay tweaks here and there. Um, and so a visual upgrade. So I, it's one of those things, I can't get excited about it until they give me a reason to be excited about it. It's just existing with new visuals and a few new gameplay gimmicks from other M, including some that a lot of people don't even like. It, it, it's like... I think remakes have a purpose to exist. And I think that it's weird because I almost feel like this remake needed to happen yes. to bring Metroid back. I don't think Metroid could have came back without a remake mm-hmm. because it needed a way to reintroduce people to the series mm-hmm. uh, that isn't Other M or isn't Federation <laughs> yes. Force. They needed a traditional Metroid. So like, I feel like this is a remake that needed to happen. Did it need to be Metroid 2? I don't know. I, I honestly think they should have just remade it all three of the Metroid Prime games and, and release those. Well, they already did Prime um, instead, Trilogy. To lead, and they still might do it. They still yep. might do it. Maybe, maybe Retro, maybe that's what Retro's doing because they're not doing Prime 4. Okay, if they've been spending three years remaking games they've already made, oh my God. That would be really cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna strangle them. Yeah. <laughs> if I can... They can, they, can, they can give that to Grezzo or some other studio to do that. Oh, oh yeah. my God. Um, yeah. Anyways. But to add further to your point, uh, it's it, also important because... It, it, I'm, I'm, I'm torn on remakes because like... Sh- on the same time, I've always been like, well, a remake, it's the same game, so, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's, you know what you're getting. But should it have more content? Some, th- some people think it should. I think it absolutely should if you're going to charge 60 bucks for the same mm-hmm. game. Um, or in, or 40 bucks for the 3DS, since that's the top. Well, actually, sorry, there are certain 3DS games that sell for $50, technically. Uh, but that's not, the, that's not the standard. So, it, I just, I, I like remakes. Like, I just said, this remake needed to exist. I enjoyed the Zelda remakes, but what I don't enjoy as a consumer is that we're getting remake. It almost feels like we're getting too many remakes. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I I feel like so like I I like the idea of remakes, but I don't like the idea of remakes in lieu of more content. Like think about what we're getting. Like this isn't even a remake. Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon's coming mm-hmm. out, but we know it takes place in the same world, probably with the the same Pokemon. Black. Maybe two it was and a white few. Thing. It's black and white. Yeah, we we see what they do with this in the past. So like, it almost feels like it's just a remake of Sun and Moon, and like all these big announcements for 3DS were basically remakes. Hmm. Where, where's my new games? Yeah, they're coming to and Switch instead. Like you say, 3DS. you're supporting like like they're gonna support it th- past 2018, and it's like okay, well then you're gonna support it with remakes. You're gonna support it with remakes. That's not support. That's laziness. That's I pay the studio 100 bucks. <laughs> they took a week. They threw some new models on it. And here's your 40 dollar game. Wow, I think the devs are gonna be real angry at you for underestimating the yeah. time they put into it. <laughs> I know. No, yeah, I, I know. I know. I'm just saying what it feels yeah, like as a consumer. Sure. Like. Yeah. Like I'd want to say that know, I, I, I want to put. For... Uh, I think there's a difference between like a remake and a remaster. I feel like what you're appreciating about the uh, the two Zelda remakes is that they're more along the lines of just exactly the same game with modern, you know, upscaled graphics and you know maybe a tweak or two here oh, and I, there to I, make it less frustrating in some parts that people didn't like. What I appreciate about those games is that. They didn't come out in lieu of other Zelda games. We still got Triforce yep. Serials. We still got A Link Between yep. Worlds. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, we still got new game releases, whereas we haven't had a Metroid since Other M, and our next experience with it's a remake, when I feel like it's a, a new 2D side-scrolling Metroid would be better. And then you release Prime 4, then you release the Metroid 2. Remake. Well, and I'm right. thinking Prime uh, 4 is far enough out that that can still happen. <laughs> yeah. But also, I think part well, of no, because um, Metro Two comes this comes this year, so it can't still happen. Yeah, I think part of why this remake is important though is that like a lot of people haven't played Metroid Two, and yeah. it's like that one gap no. that like a lot of Metroid fans skipped over or missed. Um, yeah. And so I think as far as if they had to pick one game to remake goes, like that was probably the smart choice because yep. um, you got this it. this portion oh, of this, the overarching story that's really important. Um, and yeah. it's just a lot of people are just know about that, it. A lot of people don't know. Yeah, a lot of people don't know the significance of uh, of that little sure. Metroid, you know, in in Super Metroid. Uh, yeah. And yeah. if you'd played it in order and were familiar with the story up until you got to Super Metroid, it might have made a bigger impact. But in this case, oh, yeah. it's like, oh, cool, it, that Although happened. It Sweet. Does make a really big impact without Metroid Two. 
Um, you should watch my Super Metroid video on Nintendo Prime's YouTube channel, everybody. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's really, it's really good. No, seriously, nice. we, we brought you it should. up a bunch of times. If you actually look at the top of the video, we'll have a nice link that goes right to it, so you guys can can check it out right now. Um, like, I know me saying that it's my like worst game. I, I don't think it's bad. I've said several times that I think a remake needed to happen. Um, even as I say, I think there's a better approach with a new side scrolling game before a remake. Mm-hmm. At the same time, I get it. I, it needed to happen. Maybe, it, it, it for me, it could just be the whole remake culture with Nintendo right now. Mm-hmm. It feels like we're getting a ton of remakes. Um, and it's not like we're not getting new games. ARMS just came out. Splatoon yeah. 2 mm-hmm. comes out next mm-hmm. month. But it's like the rate of remakes to new games seems a little off. I think I don't mind as much um, because Prime 4 was announced too. <laughs> That's the thing, though. It's like yeah, well, that, we're that still helps, getting helps a new game as like, well. Then I'm like, okay, great. Uh, but here's my thing. I'm not excited for Prime 4 yet. One, it's being made by a totally new studio. So we have no idea if they can even live up to the it's Prime. true, game. but Retro was new at the time, too. That's true. Well, yeah, but Retro was purchased by Nintendo. Um, the last game, the guy that's heading up the game is the same guy that headed up uh, some of the Prime series before. But also, the last game he headed up that didn't involve Retro Studios with other M. So, like, I don't have any confidence in the guy heading up the game because he doesn't have a, a, stu- a proven studio like Retro mm-hmm. Studios behind him. Um, so I have no confidence that they can even live up to the Prime series name right now. I... It's not Retro. That was the big thing when people announced it. Like, I was watching kind of funny games reactions to it. They're like, is it Retro? Is it Retro? Oh, it's not Retro, is it? And then they looked it up. Oh, no, it's not Retro Studios. So then, like, their hype started dying yeah. down a bit because it's like, well... It's like saying there's a new Zelda game. Oh, but it's not made by the Zelda team. Yeah, I think there's a danger in well, expecting this another, to be the best yeah. Prime. If that's what you're expecting, I, I think you're, you will probably well, be let down. Prime yeah. one is still so like the best I was Prime, all pumped so. for Prime <laughs> until until I learned that Prime four wasn't made by Retro. I would probably say that maybe this this went to be my worst game. Maybe it would have been, um, you know, any number, any of the 3DS games they announced. Really, could have been Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, like. <laughs> Sure, it, but at the same time, it, it's just one of those things where I was let down because one, I have no confidence in Prime Four. My hype for it like died out the same day once I found out it's not retro. Hmm. One, I'm mad because now what the hell has retro been doing for three years? Yeah, better be and awesome. Two, uh, it, tropical it, it's freeze a brand too. Unproven <laughs> team. Next, next Donkey Kong yeah. Country game. <laughs> no, I could be wrong. Like I want to be wrong. I, I hope it's amazing. Like I'm, just, I just have kind of this tepid thing. Like until someone shows me the game, what am I hyped for? I'm hyped for. A title with, that's with a brand new studio, <laughs> brand new team. I, w- this team that has not proven anything to me yet. That's E3 for you, <laughs> oh, though. I mean, remake, I got Nintendo is yeah. big on just throwing well, that, a slide that, full of titles that's usually and partners not like, that they're supposed to That's usually not with. like. <laughs> yeah, but that's not usually like mainline series is usually not made by random team that's never made a game before. Right, but it did happen mm-hmm. with Prime, the first Prime. Maybe so, they again, can. Yeah, but they announced it by showing the game. People yeah. were really skeptical yeah, about yeah. Prime when it was. Like the first Prime game when it was first uh, revealed and announced too, like they were like, "Oh, it's yeah, Metroid." Well, 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 Metroid's not to... first person, and yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, uh, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> well, but yeah, maybe that's the thing. Like because because I have a a, a fear that Prime Four isn't going to be what I I hope it's going to be. It's going to be a side scroll. That the Nate. Metroid <laughs> that the Metroid remake. It's like okay, and there's a lot of people out there that. I, because I've been following like, because the AM to our uh, creator said, hey, people don't boycott, you know, this this remake. Like, this is why I did what I did. Right. Like, this he cared about the thing. game. It's awesome. Whether or not we influenced it, this is what we wanted as a community, yeah. right? We wanted this mm-hmm. remake. And there's a lot of people saying, yeah, but we're not even excited about Prime Four because what we really wanted was was it them to do what they did to Mario, go back to side scrolling Metroid and make new mm-hmm. ones. Um, because that how long has that has it been since we've had a true side scrolling? Was that Fusion? That was the last one, and that's a remake. Fusion is no, not a remake. Zero Mission. Zero Mission is a remake. Wow. Fusion is yeah. Zero Mission. Sorry, my bad. Which one was yeah. more recent? And how long ago was that? It was Game Boy Advance, though. Yep. I mean, I, how how many generations away from that are we? Several. Uh, about eight hundred. <laughs> Actually, it doesn't translate since it is technically their their home console and it is not a portable. It's been. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be close to twenty years. Twenty since Fusion. Hmm. Well, Maybe if it was 15? Like, if it's on Game Boy Advance. It's 2000. I think it's it was Game Boy 2004. Advance, we're in year six. We're, 
Well, think about it. If we're in year six of the 3DS and the DS went for eight years, that's 14 years. We're talking like 2002, 2004 here for, for Met- Fusion. Okay, so... It's 2015 so yep. well, years still- at, the, at the most. 2002. Oh, I was off. I was off. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I was off by five years. But if years. you're... Unless you're counting zero we're talking mission, about a time which scale case, of 15 then, to 20. then that is... Okay, I should have I should have said, what is that, 15, 20 years ago? <laughs> then it would have been... I would have been 15 cool. years, yeah. Just Either saying, way, you add an extra five time. years on, people aren't going to be happy. In video games, let, let, let's, let's put that in perspective. <laughs> let's put that in perspective. Fifteen years—that's half of the lifespan of the Legend of Zelda. Yeah. Since we've had a two D Metroid, side-scrolling mm-hmm. Metroid, a brand new game, not a remake, yeah. not you know a remastering. That's insane. They've been known to do so, crazy things like bring Kid Icarus back for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> but not, not, not. Like, so I don't know. I, I guess it's just I. I was hoping for something different, and that's just not sure. what we got. 